Not all of the horrors of our world are murders or tragic accidents. Sometimes cruelty for cruelty's sake can be just as horrific as anything of blood and gore. Take, for example, the recent case of Trent Lurkamp, who, in March 2023, was subjected to horrors so unnecessary they are hard to comprehend. Trent Lurkamp is a 19-year-old native of Brunswick, Georgia. A graduate of Glen Academy High School, Trent sought friends among a group of high schoolers who allegedly caused him much abuse. Trent was hanging out with these so-called friends on the night of March 21, 2023, at a home on St. Simons Island. At first, it was reported that Trent was forced to down an excessive amount of alcohol, although the police later denied this, saying instead that Trent voluntarily drank until he blacked out. A picture circulating online shows Trent bound to a chair, unconscious and surrounded by the high schoolers, some of whom are flipping off the camera. The image of Trent at first glance seems to depict him with a bloodied face, but in reality he is covered in spray paint, which is disturbing in and of itself. This wasn't the first time something of this sort happened to Trent. Trent's father Mark reported that, previously, on March 17th, Trent came home covered in WD-40, vomit, paint, glue, and egg yolk. Trent sustained acute alcohol poisoning and nearly lost his life as a result of the March 21st incident. Three of the teens in the photo did drop Trent off at the emergency room at the Southeast Georgia Health System in Brunswick. At the time, Trent's alcohol level was 0.464, and he was breathing just six times per minute. After providing their names and phone numbers to the hospital, the teens left as Trent was rushed to the ICU and placed on a ventilator. Trent did pull through and went on to receive psychiatric treatment for emotional trauma at an undisclosed out-of-state treatment center. From there, he sent out an audio message via the local news, saying, I'm alive and doing well. Just know it's going to be a long time for me to get over this, through the trauma. But one day, hopefully, within the next few months or so, I might be back. The people of Brunswick gathered in support of Trent. While Trent was still recovering in the hospital, hundreds showed up on Monday, March 27th for a vigil in his honor. This demonstration was organized by Theowanza Brooks, a community activist and aunt of Ahmaud Arbery, whose murder also took place in the Brunswick area. The public were critical of what they perceived as inaction by law enforcement in the Arbery case and they held a similar sentiment in the case of Trent Lurkamp. Eventually, though, the police did make arrests following their investigation into Trent's case. On April 17, 2023, almost a month after Trent's near-death experience, three people were arrested in connection to his case, two adults and one teenager, James C. Strother, 46, and Lauren C. Strother, 57, surrendered and were booked at the Glen County Detention Center on misdemeanor charges of maintaining a disorderly house and contributing to the delinquency or dependency of a minor. It was at this couple's house on St. Simons Island that the infamous March 21st incident took place. Edward Rooker Hobby, 17, who is considered an adult under Georgia law, was booked on a misdemeanor battery charge but police said his arrest stemmed from a separate incident involving a different victim that was associated with the investigation into what happened to Trent. Prosecutors also filed misdemeanor charges against two unnamed juveniles. One juvenile was charged with simple battery and criminal trespass, and the other was charged with possession and use of drug-related objects. Keith Higgins, district attorney for the Brunswick Judicial Circuit, said the juvenile who is facing the battery charge, quote, committed certain acts after Trent had become intoxicated after voluntarily drinking alcohol. The drug charge against the other juvenile came about as the result of evidence that was discovered while investigators were serving a search warrant at the Strothers residence. Hobby and the Strothers were released from custody on Monday after posting bond, according to the detention center. 
All three face a maximum sentence of 12 months in prison and a $1,000 fine. As for the juveniles, their fates rest with the juvenile court. Following the investigation and arrests, Trent's family slammed the authorities, accusing them of downplaying the events of March 21st. The police maintained that Trent consumed the excessive amount of alcohol voluntarily and consented to taking the notorious photo. They also explained an image of Trent being hosed down as depicting the aftermath of an egg fight all the boys engaged in, and that Trent was simply being washed off, something he also consented to. Nonetheless, Theowanza Brooks has commented that certain things, quote, don't add up. After all, if Trent was passed out, how could he consent to taking the photo? And why was he the only one being hosed down if everyone had joined in on the egg fight? Despite the many questions in the case of Trent Lurkamp, his parents maintain, quote, At the end of the day, he was mistreated in inhumane ways. They went on to say, A vulnerable 19-year-old was made to be a sick joke of someone's disgusting fun and games. As of the date of this video, the story of Trent Lurkamp continues to unfold, and while it's arguable whether justice has been served, we can all agree Trent should never have ended up in life-endangering circumstances. Thanks for listening, guys. Stay safe out there. And remember, don't get scared out of sorts.